So maybe you've got an older blockchain.info wallet, but when you try to access it, even though you are sure your password is right, it rejects it. Even though you might have it written down, you might have stored it in a password manager, what can you do? This came from a recovery that I was doing earlier on in the year for some people. And basically this is something where we'd been going backwards and forwards and just trying to work out what was going on with this wallet. You know, they were sure their password was correct and I was sure they'd probably just made a mistake. But as we worked our way through, it actually turned out that while BTC Recover correctly identified the password for this wallet, that they still could not use it to log in to send some funds. And the thing that made this really interesting in this situation is that this individual basically had been keeping backups of the uh, encrypted wallet files from their blockchain.com wallet. So we actually had samples of the wallet file from 2014 all the way through to today. We could actually see the addresses that were in question. We could see that they were being successfully used in transactions uh, like this person was describing. And you could actually see that this bug was actually introduced all the way back in the oldest backups of their wallet and had actually been preserved all the way through until today. This is one of those recovery stories that had a happy ending in that once we were able to identify what was actually going on with this bug, we were able to do a recovery and they were able to regain access to their funds. Basically, I posted my findings and a bit of a write-up about what was going on on the uh, blockchain.com GitHub back in April. And uh, I should mention at the beginning, they also generously paid out a bug bounty for identifying that bug. It's been a few months now and it still actually hasn't been fixed. So I just want to take the time to just uh, share this information just to make sure that those who might be in a similar situation can uh, have the process to securely recover their funds. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that we can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So in this video, I'm just gonna do three things. Firstly, I'm just gonna run through how you can identify and be sure that your wallet actually has this bug and that's the reason why you can't get into it as opposed to just not knowing your password, which let's be honest, is the issue the majority of the time. Secondly, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about why this bug happens and uh, what's going on uh, at a technical level, basically, and just briefly look at that. And then finally, I'm just gonna run through how you can use BTC Recover to decrypt and dump your wallet file, even in situations uh, where it is bugged in a way that it's it's actually not possible to do this using the official blockchain.com tool. One of the other challenges in this situation is that blockchain.com wallets are non-custodial. So essentially they can't see or know whether your wallet is actually affected by this or whether you just have forgotten your password. So what this looked like back in April is they actually couldn't even log in to see the balance of their wallet. They kept on being prompted for a second password. Even if they tried to re-import the uh, wallet file using the password that they knew was correct and hit continue, they got this error message down here. So no private keys imported, unknown format, incorrect password. If they ran BTC recover with that same wallet file, it would actually correctly find the password every single time. It is important to say that there can be situations where you have uh, sort of a non-standard character in your password, maybe like a return character or something like that. But in those situations, BTC Recover will actually spit out a HTML encoded version of your password. But in this case, we can see there's no return characters or anything else like that. That's just the fully normal password. So if you've run through the process like I cover in this video here and BTC Recover correctly finds what you think should be the exact password for your wallet and it doesn't work, it may well be because your wallet is bugged. The other thing you can do is you can also just turn on the development console in your browser or development tools. And basically you wanna have the JavaScript console. And uh, you can actually see here all of the errors from when I imported the wallet before. You can actually just go to the sort of legacy wallet import tool. This allows you to import an old wallet.aes.json file. And basically what I'll show you is this. So if I put this old wallet file in and I'll just type in the wrong password, so wrong password, it gives this error down here, you know, error decrypting wallet, please check your password is correct. And uh, you know, it spits out all these errors along here. So basically it didn't decrypt correctly. Um, but I'll just clear that and I'll show you if I import this same wallet file, that's exactly the same one with the uh, correct password this time, uh, you know, I get that error that I showed you before, uh, which is different to the one we just got when the password was wrong. But you can see that it says here, result not 32 bytes in length. So basically the issue is this right here, is that it's decrypting the private key, but the decrypted private key is not 32 bytes in length. Uh, it's actually less than that, and that's the problem, which then makes it go on to basically say, you know, unknown format, uh, and it basically assumes based on this error that that's just because of an incorrect password, which is not always the case. 
So to understand more about what this error message actually means, about you know what it means for the private key to be the wrong length, for that we have to look a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes, like inside blockchain uh, wallets, blockchain.info wallets. So we'll just show you a couple of things for that. So firstly, what I have here, this is just a blockchain uh, wallet. So this uh, is basically what is stored on the servers for blockchain.info or blockchain.com. So basically all of that decrypts to be this. We can actually see this one has double encryption turned on too. So basically this tells us a bit of information about what is in the wallet and it also has all of the private keys. And you can see here, um, you know, this is an address that is in the wallet. And then this here is an encrypted private key. And what I have here is essentially that same wallet except with this encrypted private key, uh, which has been decrypted, and then the private key, which has been converted into a compressed private key. That's the one you want there. And uh, I also have it just dumping an uncompressed one um, just in case there were some really old bots kicking around that still needed that. Uh, but anyway, but basically that is the base 58 uh, representation of the private key and this is exactly where everything went wrong for this older wallet file I'll just use brain wallet X because that's a really easy way to demonstrate this but basically what would happen what was happening in these older blockchain wallets is if you had a private key like this one uh, essentially rather than base 58 encoding it to this which is what the modern wallet would do and what the modern wallet expects to be able to essentially you know convert that back get this 32 byte hexadecimal string the older wallet was actually leaving the leading zeros off meaning that you had what looked like a 31 byte private key and you ended up with a hex a base 58 encoded version of it like this and the reason why it wasn't a problem back then is because of the way the wallet did its base 58 to hexadecimal conversion in that it essentially would just run through converting it from one to the other and then it would also just zero pad the result so that you ended up with a 32 byte private key whereas the newer software essentially assumes that the base 58 encoded private key already has all of the leading zeros included in it and this is a really good example of the kind of simple mistake uh, that someone can make that can result in loss of funds. And you know, this I think really highlights that you know, coding uh, robust wallets for cryptocurrencies is actually hard work. The standard and the quality required uh, and the thoroughness to do this uh, in a way that these simple bugs don't get into stuff is actually hard work. And if you're someone who's really into altcoining, you need to really clearly understand that the quality of the wallet software and the maturity of the teams and processes that go into it is a huge part of the risk of altcoining. And if you're using a wallet that's closed source, mistakes like this might happen. It might take years before it's actually obvious that things have changed or broken and you might have almost no ability to work out what is going on and to be able to recover your funds. Using mature software from experienced teams where the source code to find out exactly what was going on in the wallet at the time you were using it is really important. So if you're someone in this situation, what can you do about it? So let's just run through how to do this with BTC Recover. So basically since April, BTC Recover has had the ability to dump uh, certain wallet files. And look, to be honest, the uh, number of wallet files this supports is quite low because it was mostly to do with this uh, specific recovery. And uh, essentially you can do it by, you can just say dump wallet, which will just spit out uh, the raw decrypted wallet, or you can actually just say dump priv keys. So this will actually just give you something you can stick straight into Electrum. When you're dumping the wallet file from BTC Recover, you don't actually have to do anything special if your wallet is bugged in this way, in that BTC Recover essentially just checks that the private key is the correct length after converting it from base 58 back to hex. It will zero pad it if needed, uh, and then off it goes. So basically you can just use a command just like this one on the uh, in the documentation where you essentially just feed it the uh, wallet file, you give it the file that you want it to dump the uh, decrypted wallet into, and then you just uh, you can actually just pass it the correct password just so you don't even need to worry about a token list or anything else like that. And if you just um, hit enter, it will actually just dump the wallets and the keys, well successfully dumped. And if you run that command, it'll actually produce a file that looks exactly like this one, just in the uh, folder where you ran it. And uh, we can see it's got the private keys all there correctly formatted. And likewise, if you want to put those private keys straight into Electrum, you can use the dump priv keys command instead, which will give you a file that looks like this one. And it basically just dumps out both the compressed and uncompressed version of everything, um, which it doesn't hurt to have extra private keys. If your wallet has a second password and the private key is, you know, a base 64 sort of encrypted stuff like that, um, you basically just need to add in a second 
uh, parameter which tells it what the second password is as well as the correct second password and uh, then you will get a wallet that has both the encrypted private key the sort of decrypted base 58 private key and the uh, two private keys that you can import into your wallet uh, and likewise you can also just dump them straight into what you would use in Electrum. And if you just dump the private keys and end up with a file just like this one, you can basically then just choose to import Bitcoin. You can just use Electrum and say you want to import Bitcoin addresses or private keys. And you can literally just copy that straight into there. Uh, that obviously you need to get rid of that top line. Uh, and then you can just say next. And uh, so there you go. We now have the uh, Bitcoin address from our blockchain.info wallet in Electrum. Uh, and you can just then use Electrum to send the transaction as you normally would. And uh, again, if you're wanting to do this securely, you just have to run Electrum in something like Tails Linux. And if you want to be really, really secure, you can run it in Tails Linux with no network connection whatsoever and just offline sign the transactions. So there you go. If you're someone who is in this situation, who had a wallet that was uh, affected by this, you know, I would love to know. Definitely let me know in the comments or somewhere else. Love to hear from you just to work out how widespread this issue might actually be. Uh, but again, just be really clear, you know, most of the time, if you don't know what your wallet password is, that is probably the issue. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.